Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World. I am your host, Rhino Clavin. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the best and worst of the 2018 Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. To join me for this discussion, we've got Mr. Charles Boda. Hey, folks. Ouch. Mr. Steve Porter. <laughs> Hello. And in the back, Mr. Craig Williams. Thank you. Did you just punch the table? I sure did. I was so He's jazzed so... <laughs> up about the holidays, I felt like I wanted to injure myself. Eventually, you'll listen to me when I tell you to stop hitting the table. I Someday, there'll just be a big old cushion with the yeah. gel from the inside of mouse pads on here. We still haven't rhino-proofed the outlets yet or any of the sharp corners oh, in the room. So yeah. No, no, no. No, no. I'm not sure we have enough in the budget to ever do that. So, um, yeah. So this year, this is the uh, return of the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays, not to be confused with the Festival of the Holidays at Disney California Adventure, which is something completely different. Um, but we are... I just lost my page. Sorry. Um, we are going to break this up based on uh, food, entertainment offerings, as well as candlelight processionals and um, storytellers, and then just kind of run you through the whole thing and just say whether we feel like it, it lies on the best side of things or the worst side of things. I mean, we could call it a hit and miss, but I feel like it's a little a little more mm-hmm. a little more involved than that. So let's just jump right in with my favorite thing, which is food. Just in general, that's my favorite thing. Is it my favorite thing about the offerings here this year? I'm not sure. But for those of you who don't know, um, the International Festival of the Holidays offers um, holiday kitchens, which are kiosks that are set up around various areas of the park. You've got American Holiday Table, Bavarian, uh, excuse me, Bavaria Holiday Kitchen, Feast of the Three Kings, Holiday Sweets and Treats, La Haim Holiday Kitchen, which is new this year, Los Posadas, um, La, this is the French one, La Marche de Noël. I don't have it in front of me, so I cannot tell you the I'm actual gonna, name. I'm going to be that proud of myself if it is Le Marche, because I was going to call it Le Marchi. Um, <laughs> Prost, uh, Sapphire Holiday, Prost. Shanghai Holiday, Prost, um, Shi Wasu, Tuscany, Yukon, and um, there's another one called More Culinary Delights, just because they were like, we just need more, but we don't have enough to necessitate. <laughs> Gee, well, I know, I didn't realize they celebrated the holidays in all of those places. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, son, they celebrated everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, Craig, can you please show up at every storyteller at Epcot and just do that? We'll get you a beanie. We'll, just... well gee, mister, I don't realize that when they we... celebrate the holidays there. When we eventually move into a studio, I want just a big chair when we do these ones with a big uh... book. And Craig, is, Craig has a stool where he sits next to me or like a little ottoman. <laughs> well, yeah, so um, the food offerings have you guys been able to experience any of the uh, kiosks this year yet Try I, I have uh not a ton because it was on my way into seeing candlelight uh so i kind of stopped at a couple places but that wasn't like my main objective yeah when i was there i i did a couple there's a vlog if you're interested um i did it with tyler and katrina um it's on the uh, youtube channel dis unplugged youtube.com slash is unplugged um it will be up at some point yes um during the festival of the holidays but i did i did visit and, and do a couple of booths um craig you you got to experience some of the food this year too right yeah i experienced some during the media event i've bought others uh there's there's a lot happening there so i uh, mostly good things to say. Mostly. They come out at night, mostly. mostly. Um, yeah, so I, um, I think this, for me, this isn't a full-on... So Craig spoke about this on another show, um, and this does hold true, is that this year, it seems like the Holiday Kitchens are taking a similar approach to how Food & Wine does, does it, with a little bit of a smaller, scaled-back offering mm-hmm. with... Uh, you know, um, the price is being a little bit lower than they were. However, I'm not sure that the price matches the quantity you're getting everywhere you go. But um, they used to have it as essentially it was other options for like quick service. If you're going to eat a quick service, you could pick a booth and be like, that's my meal right mm-hmm. there. Um, and this year it seems kind of like they want you to sample stuff a little bit more. Uh, I, I went to several, the Feast of the Three Kings. I went to Los Posadas. I went to... Um, uh, I can't. I can't remember the other one now off the top of my head. Oh, the, uh, the the Tuscany in Italy, and I have to say that I wasn't necessarily wowed by anything. Uh, my favorite thing so far that I've had at this festival is a returning favorite of mine, which is the eggnog, uh, the shipyard eggnog porter, which you can find in several locations, not just at the American Holiday Table. They have it at the Outpost in Africa and. Um, it's better there, there too, because you get the, the full glass. glass. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I appreciate 
I like whenever Epcot has food. I mean, that's the whole thing is Epcot's supposed to be this educational celebration of cultures. And I like when there are kiosks that mix up the offerings in general. I don't know how I feel about it this year. I don't feel like there's enough education in how is this the food that each one of these cultures that's represented by the holiday kitchen, if this is like their traditional holiday meal, or if it's just like, here's some food from this area. Well, you know, it's not true in the one case. Well, yes, we yeah. have discussed on the Tuesday show about the mm-hmm. well, essentially. Yeah. And we know it's not true in German. I don't want to speak out of turn here, but like the Yukon holiday kitchen, uh, one of the menu items from that is the seared salmon with uh, crown maple whiskey glaze. And I'm pretty sure that's been on a food and wine festival menu before. So I think they have had Mm -hmm. salmon there in the past. It's not always a staple, but like at the one outside of Morocco, you have a grilled lamb kefta kebab. Like that's not that's year round. Yeah, that's a lot of day specific. Yeah, all of these all of these foods seems to be pretty much year round, uh, no matter what you're looking at or just um or maybe maybe even like during the season it's a it's a seasonal staple but mm. nothing that that is like really sticking out i mean well the one that i think does the most is honestly the american yeah. the yeah. american kitchen table doing turkey or ham yeah mm-hmm. like that's that's, that's very, spot on yeah yeah but um which that would be really hard to screw up if. that'd be embarrassing and i think <laughs> it would be it would stand out more than the others but mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah I, I not to say that the food that you're going to get is going to be bad necessarily. There wasn't I mean, I had a couple of things that weren't amazing, but I also had some stuff that I was like, oh, this is yep. pretty good. It just doesn't feel like the theming is quite there. I, I will say I liked the Los Posadas. Um, there is there was a enchilada there that was really, really good. But yeah, the, again, I don't know that that was a holiday meal. Yeah. The one thing that is like really calling to me this year is the amount of logs that they have. Oh, yes. And there's either five or six. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was actually funny. Rhino and I were there the other day and we're like, oh, we really need to come back and do a video where we get all the different logs. And then I ran into a friend the like next day after that who's like, actually, I'm actually I'm filming a video of trying each of the logs all around here. I'm like, that's the exact same thing that we were going to do. And uh, it's just it's it feels like something that they're they're really doing right this year. So like they have the one Christmas log that's like a chocolate cake with dark caramel ganache in there. They have the one the green tea one <coughs> that right outside one of the Japan in. one. There's like a gingerbread one that you can get at the Yukon holiday table. So there's those are like I said, there's a bunch of them all over the place. Uh, desserts, lots of cookies around. You can't go. I, I don't think you can really go wrong with any things in terms of trying. Just um, it. Just keep in mind that it's it's food that uh, don't don't go up and buy it and be like, "Yep, I'm celebrating this culture's Christmas now because yeah. I'm eating this food." Yeah. You're, you're not. Really. How much? Um, you know, because food and wine, the highlight is on the food and wine festival. Of the holidays, the highlight's supposed to be in the holidays. So, like your guys' opinions, how big of a factor do you think the food is, and whether somebody decides to go to festival? Of the holidays? I don't think. I, I don't like. Is it just I, like it happens to be there? In I your think head? that's what because that's is. kind of yeah. my vibe too. Is like I wouldn't ever go there for the food, I, specifically. But I feel like in general. Uh, this is not on the the level that food and wine or flower and garden is mm-hmm. to the outsiders. Like, I don't think there's a lot of people, unless you know a lot about Walt Disney World and the Disney parks, that like your average person probably comes not even knowing that this is going to be part of the offerings. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think the main the main event is uh, candlelight, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I I don't know. I think this is it's just a bonus. I, I think mm-hmm. you're there and you're like bonus food. But I think you can get the same enjoyment out of it. I think it really should be taken. Maybe closer to flower and garden than food and wine. Food and wine is mm-hmm. very stretching with, but in terms of like, it's definitely a step above Festival of the Arts in my opinion. But what maybe in terms of how much offerings there are around Festival of the Arts, they have probably one or two less booths around there. So and uh, yeah. their their plates take a lot longer to yeah. get out. Where this is, this is tossed at you quickly like it would be at flower and garden or mm-hmm. or uh, food and wine festival so i would i would honestly consider it on that level but um it's not it's not where it's the only attraction here they want you to see the other entertainment that's also around celebrating the holidays 
Well, so this is best and worst. What does that lie on your list then? For me, it's a best. I would rather, as much as I hate festivals, this is like the only one that I can stomach because I feel like it's not as intrusive. And it's also not the main star of it. So for me, it would be it would be a hit. It would be a best. I, I we should have just done this as hit or miss. I don't know why I didn't do it as hit or miss because mm-hmm. I, I I I I I do lean toward it being best because for me I I appreciate even if they're maybe not the best representations of that that areas or that culture's um, holiday meal. I still like the idea that it forces them to in some not always in some cases, but in some cases it's mixing up the menu. Mm-hmm. So it's for people like us who are there more frequently. It just gives me something new to try, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. I appreciate that. So I I and like I said, I went through and there was only like one or two things that I had that were. Like, I, it clearly was just not prepared correctly. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, overall, I'm like, I enjoyed what I had. So mm-hmm. yeah, everything that I've had so far, granted that's only been maybe four or five items. Uh, but yeah, everything I've had is good. The only thing I will say that looks better than it is is in Italy, and it's the uh, what is it called here? I have a I had it. Is it the grilled up. cheese sandwich? Yes, it's the mozzarella in Corazoa. Uh, I'm pronouncing that. In- totally butchering that i'm sure um but yeah it looks really good but i didn't think it tasted that good that's a shame because the italians are known for their grilled cheeses (laughs) (laughs) well anyway so i even charles you really haven't been able to try a lot of the food have you um not too much of it Uh, to be honest with you that's kind of the reason i brought it up though is that there's no like their offerings aren't you know they're seasonal for disney but they're not seasonal as in the cultures of the season. And in my head, when it comes to this stuff, it's either like you have you have the option of not doing those specifically themed kiosks and just having food. But if you're going to do it, do it right. And like in my head, it adds to the theming if it reflects the culture or how it's celebrated in the holiday. So like especially big misses with, and we won't go into detail with it, but the Laheim one and stuff like that, where it's like, if you cared more about the theming, yeah. you like you know you would have put effort into making so sure. So it, it's overall it's it's good. I, to but me, it, to it, me, it's it has, a miss. It, though, still. Oh, it's got a miss for you. To okay. me, it's still a miss because once again, if you're going to do it, its full do potential. it right. It's not bad, but it's a miss because they had opportunities to do a better job. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Well, there's also um, some various entertainment that is tied in here. Um, actually, before we get into that, I want to talk about the storytellers. So for people who may not know, as you go around the World Showcase, um, in each one of the different pavilions, they have um, different stories about their specific holiday that they celebrate. Um, and and a lot of times they'll have a storyteller come out and tell that story. Um, I This is something... I guess i just we never came to disney this time of year when i was a kid so i never really knew about this till i moved here and i actually think for me this is one of the highlights of the um the festival because yeah. it can be engaging um you know depending on which one it is i'm not some are better than others but i think it's really cool that they kind of it's still that celebration of culture here's how we do this and they come out and some you know some will come out and which is the one that has the little squirrely fellow that's always running around. That's, that's in Norway. Norway. It's I think Sigrid and the Yulnison or something like that. I, I don't have it right in a front of me. A lot of them have very uh, tongue twisting names. So, <laughs> but um, but I I think it's really cool and it's something that like I'm like oh this is fun and they're just long enough where I'm like it I I can imagine being a kid and not being like, why am I standing here watching this? You know, they make it fun enough. So for me, I feel like that is a big, uh, a big, definitely on the best list. Yeah. Yeah, It kind of, it hits all the cylinders of like, this is Christmas or this is a holiday theme. And it's also going along the underlying of Epcot being an educational experience and that you're, you know, learning about different things. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel? What do you feel? Craig, you got I, I, say about this? I, the, yeah, these were, I'm, I was very much in the same boat as you that I did not know about these, but I also didn't travel during this time of year. Yeah. So it wasn't until my sister moved down here uh, while she was on the college program and such that we discovered the holiday storytellers. And it was like one of those little hidden gems that you just didn't know about unless, unless you were used to coming this time of year. And that was back when I first started. That's when all of the all of the holidays had actual storytellers with it so i believe mexico was mexico was the three kings 
Norway was Sigrid and Jolnissen, and China was the Monkey King, which was like one of the most entertaining ones at all. This guy went like all out. Germany was the the story of the Nutcracker and German Christmas. Uh, I'm, I, yes, I am going through all of them because some of them are still there. Italy was La Bafana, the witch with the broom, which yeah. she's one of my favorites. Uh, American Adventure back in the day, they, they would have a storytelling of Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and... And then, obviously, Christmas, Candlelight Processional, the Liberty, um, the Voices of Liberty, everything. With that, Japan's always been the little lady with the cart and the bell that she just goes crazy about. I still am not really sure. I think that's a New Year one. But she's ringing her bell every day in and day out, so good for her. Morocco, I think that's the only one that never really had one. France has always been uh, Père Noël. Mm. Uh, United Kingdom has always been Father Christmas. And then back in the day, Canada was... It was their version of Santa, which he was like a, a your stereotypical Santa that's wearing like a wearing plaid and <laughs> kind of like a lumberjack Santa mm-hmm. almost in a way. So those those were the offerings all around from from when I I went and since then like Canadian holiday voyagers have taken over from the Canadian Santa Claus and they play some some Christmas songs on the stage and it's I'm not really a fan of that. Um, and obviously Germany is now Dirch and Dirch and <laughs> we all know how I feel about Dirch and Dirch yeah, not very highly of it <laughs> but uh, yeah there's, they've made changes throughout the years but I think overall they, they know which are the ones that are the the most meaningful of like Father Christmas in the UK Pavilion if you haven't watched that one before uh, if you're not going to make it down to the Festival of the Holidays. I would still watch that one online. We have it. It's very readily available for anyone. Like I, I still, anytime I catch it, it's like it, it just it, it kind of embodies that the the Santa Claus side of the Christmas spirit, but also brings in you know charity, goodness uh, to all, to goodwill to men, all that crap from mm-hmm. the Christmas Carol and all the other things Christmas related. So for me, holiday storytellers. Our candlelight processional is amazing, but holiday storytellers, if they would just ax all that and say, you know what, we, we need to cut the entertainment budget, if they lost that, they would they would kill a lot of the heart of this mm. festival. Yeah, right I agree. I, I have a question for you. How yes. excited would you be, though, if they added Krampus to Germany? Oh, that's, uh, that's <laughs> a, a loaded question, but yes, I, I, think, <laughs> I think that actually should be represented in a way uh, in in some way at all i, I want to say maybe that was part of the guardians the old... of the galaxy krampus after dark no <laughs> no still not that uh i think that they might have briefly mentioned krampus back in the old storyteller i'm probably wrong in just making that up in my head but you know what it is it is the aspect of some of the cultures in lower bavaria mm-hmm. so it should be there and it's enough in i think like cultural knowledge now to where it wouldn't if you it wouldn't have to terrify or, or or any kids or anything like that. You could do it in a yeah. fun way. Mm-hmm. But, but the bell schnickel yeah. has to be <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. The um, uh, One of the things that I like about it, and it, it depends upon which storyteller you're talking about, and you know, obviously there's some variation, but that's one of those entertainment things where it, it adds a personal feel to it, whereas maybe some of the other things don't. Like, you, I, I, in, if you stop and you listen to them and, and you watch them, like the crowds aren't as big most of the time and you actually feel like this like kind of individual connection with Epcot and the holidays. Well, you do. That, you know, um, that it makes the experience a lot more fun and, you know, even unpacked crowded days and stuff. Uh, not everybody stops to look at those. Not everybody stops to watch it. But when you do, it's, you know, the audience interaction that they have and everything, it makes it feel more like it gives it that personal holiday touch instead of just having an entertainment yeah, offer. Well, I, uh, the, they they are storytellers in that way, but I look at them more as teachers. Mm-hmm. And the the bands that are up there playing in some of the countries, those are straight performers. Yeah, they're not mm-hmm. there to teach you anything. Right. They're there to just they're there to be their the trained monkeys. They're they're just up there strumming away, singing all of that. And but the storytellers that are are 
teaching. They're down there. They are making eye contact with the crowd. Yeah. Sometimes they're bringing in audience participation in there as well, too. Mm-hmm. You do get that individualized connection where you just don't get that with the others. And I understand you need to keep things fresh, change it up. But uh, the more one-on-one you get with that, the more individual connections you make, the better The better you walk away from that experience being like, wow, I really got something from that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I know you br- you mentioned it and what you were just saying, but uh, there is other entertainment besides the storytellers. Like he said, um, in Germany, they now have the Dirch and Dirch. Um, and the, um, at Lahayam, the gentleman with the violin. Yes. Well, that's a Dirch and Dirch, I believe, would we would not classify that as much as a Holly, Holly, bah, holiday storyteller. Yeah. But the Hanukkah storyteller is is new this year. They mm-hmm. have had Hanukkah okay, storytellers. Okay. So he is the, the storyteller then. Yes. That's his. Okay. Yes, I was he, confused if he was entertainment or if he was the storyteller. No, but. he he's a storyteller okay. for sure in that. And, uh, you know, it's, I, he does, I'm not, I am very familiar with Hanukkah from the Rugrats Hanukkah special, and that's <laughs> that's about it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and church it up mm-hmm. that I know everything about Hanukkah. I felt like when I watched him that I walked away learning something. So I guess it's serving a purpose. Yeah. Well, what do we think about the other entertainment that is offered in the park, such as Joyful, a gospel celebration of the Caesar and feature, featuring divine voices? Have you you're familiar with Is this that in group? Future World? Yeah. Yeah, they do it on the like the stage by the the water fountain. Um I think that they are enthusiastic. <laughs> they and they're really, lively. Oh, they are and I will tell you they're of all the things where they like hype up a crowd, these guys do a good pretty good job. Well, lady too. But like, you know, like it I'm it, it, I will say it is aggressively. Um, when I was walking through, I there. It's like they said, it is a gospel celebration. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, be prepared. It's a lot of um, yelling about Jesus and everything. And it was very like, but like they were so into. It. I was like, wow, this their energy is infectious and contagious. And I just thought it was like I. I enjoyed it. I, it was something that walking up to it, I was like, I'm going to hate this. And like, once I kind of got up there, I was like, eh, this is actually kind of getting me in the, mm-hmm. you know, in the mood to like celebrate and yeah. stuff. So they are great, but it is a lot and it is, yeah. it is loud. And it's also, <laughs> it's always an awkward experience every time I watch it because you'll like, you'll be coming from behind the stage Uh, past the fountain and think like oh my gosh there's huge crowd i see all these people there and then as you get up to them it's just like people standing watching but they make sure that there's at least five feet apart between them and the next person (laughs) so it looks like there's always as more people there than there really is but they also don't look like they're having fun until you see that like one drunk couple is like well yeah yeah, let's let's do it to it uh so they are very talented it's worth seeing if you've never seen it before i would recommend to anyone even if you're going to see candlelight at some point during it if you want some of the best most moving entertainment that's found during the holiday period go inside right before the the sh- next showing of american adventure yeah. when the voices of liberty are putting on one of their sets because they will they will put on holiday sets instead and it's just you know watching the voices of liberty any time of the year is amazing but during the holidays when they are representing different cultures they're bringing in different songs also playing some of the classics that you want to hear singing their acapella rhino's favorite musical <sighs> styling uh it's just it, it's so moving it's it's something that you you have to see in the rotunda where they just let their voices carry up into the rafters bringing it back to that band that performs what is or the the choir that performs in future joyful. what's her name what joyful. joyful joyful yeah uh yeah i think they're really talented but i don't like the location like i don't that's like a major area that a lot of people I think that to, maybe is what is fighting against them in terms of like being able to get people aren't sure where to like, I know it's a wide open area, but it, it doesn't create a very like, get these people in, let's all dance and be together. Or right. Whatever. It'd be know. like standing right in the middle. If like the stage show for, for, uh, for, uh, uh what's it called? Friendship Fair, Mickey's Friendship Fair was like in the middle of main street, not like up near a hub. Like it, 
that's like a main area that you're trying to walk through. There's just no other place though. You can't put the like you can't yeah. put them on the the Canada stage. You wouldn't be able to walk through Canada then. That's that's part of what's good about them is they are so talented. They draw a crowd. It's just they draw a crowd in a place that's so wide open that you know you could throw a you could throw a brick and you probably wouldn't hit anyone because everyone's afraid of each other. It's the yeah. holidays. Stay I, away from people. I like the mariachi uh, singers in Mexico myself. Mm-hmm. I don't. I I I know they think they were incorporating songs from Coco into. That was it last this year. year. Was it last year they started doing that? But I I don't know. I always feel like I I enjoy walking through and whenever they come out, they're one of the bands that I actually don't mind stopping for mm-hmm. a few minutes to listen to. I did listen to that Dirch and Dirch business, and that makes it, it is like. You go into your friend's band where you were in high school in the late 90s, early 2000s, and you're like, oh, you guys aren't that bad. But what you learned is they're actually just loud and <laughs> enthusiastic. And well, like, the, the style of music that they do, I've known a billion people in different bands exactly like it, is, you know, it's that three chord, like, pop, punk, but pop punk kind of thing where it's like, I don't know whether you're good or not because the style of music that you're lending to is like, it's the style of music that most people learn because they don't know how to play instruments. Oh, well, we can do we can do this. Yeah, pu- we can do punk covers. It's like, oh yes, everybody can do punk covers. Well, don't forget about their the, original song. Well, and yeah. the thing that bothers me is it's not the style of music. It's just that the like the level of it. Those guys like they look like they should be playing, you know, a basement bar show yeah. or opening for like a different better band. But having a steady gig in Epcot. Like I don't know who they know, but like that, that, it does not seem like a was merit. Like, Bring these guys in. No, I mean like nepotism. I don't know who like they know or they're related to because I can't come up with a logical reason why they'd be like, I like these kids. Give them a full season of Festival of the Holidays. Hey, the Beatles got their start in Germany, and Dirch and Dirch got their start in Germany. So <laughs> coincidence. What, I, what I'm saying is Dirch and Dirch and the Beatles. Right One in the same. Yeah. Yep. So where do we feel like that sort of entertainment lies? On the best side of the list, on the worst side of the list? What I, do you think? I would I would put it right in the middle. I yeah. think there's some gems and I think there's some real it's, it's like, trash. Like, like mm-hmm. <laughs> they're like really on the other side of the thing. It's like it's like I don't want to you to say worst, I don't want it all to go away. Yeah. Know? So it's like, yeah. Yeah, so we're kind of on the line about that. But then um well we also have the uh, the tag on the um Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. Uh, does the tag have a specific name? I just had it up and I it's lost it. It's the Illuminations Holiday tag. Is it? That's just what it's. Sorry, I like. I scrolled to the top. Uh, yeah, it's just special holiday ending. But um, if you've never seen this, like, I think this is really cool because for me, it's kind of like they're like, um, let's just take every firework that we have and launch it in the sky for the next thirty seconds, and you're like, this is incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do it with a little bit of Christmas music and stuff. So I, I'm I'm on the better side of this. Do I wish it was an entire holiday fireworks show devoted to Christmas? Yes, of course I do. But I still really enjoy going to see this. I don't know. How do you feel? Have you seen this one? Uh, yeah, and it's extra. Yeah, like it. Yeah, so it's it's more. It's just a I don't, yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah. not going to complain about it. It's what I was already too many ex- fireworks. Yeah, it's in that what show. I was already expecting, and then more fireworks. That's um, seems weird that. That would ever be a problem with anybody, yeah. but uh, yeah, I agree. It's just extra fireworks. I will say, with the fireworks changing, like Epcot Forever, and then eventually a new show, I wonder. I'm curious what they're going to have for that. I also think it would be cool if they had a show that represented all the different traditions somehow. I don't know how they would do this, but you know, represent Hanukkah, represent Kwanzaa, represent all the different holidays, and kind of incorporate that all into the fireworks show. I don't yeah. know how to do that, but someone out there smarter than me can probably figure that out. Well, that's like the holiday illuminations that ran years and years ago. That did it a little bit. Like, it had a, a Nutcracker section. It had a, a Hanukkah section oh, to okay. it. And I'm unfamiliar. It still, it, neither was I. I did not know anything about it until someone told me that that's where the tag came from, hmm. was they just literally cut off the last part of that show and added it to Illuminations, mm-hmm. and that's how we have it. it the Let there be peace on our section. And yeah. I think, you know, it's you can say that that Illuminations is a moving show as like as a whole, but the let there be peace on earth ending is just yeah. Like it is 
the definition of why we should be celebrating the holidays. Not, not It doesn't matter what country you're from, what culture you are, how you celebrate. It's it's all about peace on earth ultimately with that. And so between the fireworks, the, the song that echoes all throughout Epcot, it's just a really great time. And the only thing I wish is that they wouldn't have replaced Walter Cronkite's voice in it because it was like old grandpa Cronkite <laughs> wishing you a good night when he would come on for that. And then I just replaced it with, mm. with that lady. That's a shame. Yeah. Well, that's definitely on the best side of the list. And then um, just I it's not really worth going into too much, but there is another uh, one of those hide and seek kind of map things. It's Chippendale's Christmas tree spree, which I appreciate. I always like when those are there for kids, yeah. you know, and family and stuff like that, because it's a nice little bonus add on or something. Or Although I almost just forgot and I opened a file on my computer. Um, oh, wow. Is, that's some racy stuff. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, it was my editing software that I didn't want to open. Um, um, but is there's the there's a cookie trail this year or something, isn't there? Um, That's but I wouldn't classify that as different. The cookie trail, you just there's five different cookies at the food booths that are already there, and if you take part in that, then you can get a chaser cookie. <laughs> I've had the chaser cookie, and again, Disney invited me and gave me the cookie for free. The cookie sucked. So that leads us to the uh, last part of this festival, which is, I feel like, the centerpiece and just a great thing, which is the Candlelight Processional. <laughs> um, I, I, again, never came when I was a kid, so this was something I didn't experience till the first year I moved here, and the first one I saw was, uh, I believe it was his first year, was Neil Patrick Harris. And I remember being like, this is the coolest thing ever. Barney Stinson is up there on stage. Because this was like the second season of How I Met Your Mother when I lived here. And I was like, I'm watching the show. Is anyone else watching this cool show? No? None of you watching this show? But it is just when you get the choir of all these people singing and they're telling the story. Um, the story of uh, the birth of baby Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I should be a narrator someday, I think. But um I don't know. It's a. It's kind of a. It's a beautiful thing. I feel terrible for all the people that have to stand there for as long as the story goes on for. But it's just. It's one of those like you get those classic like um, like hallelujah, and you just yeah. get it sung by this this massive choir of people coming at you. You're just like the blasting Christmas at me right now. Yeah. You know, that's my favorite Christmas songs aren't like the rocky new jazzy kind of ones or any like stuff. It's honestly like. A lot of the stuff that feels like uh, it has some soul behind it and everything. And when you're sitting there with the orchestra there, there, there's a power to the music. And there's also an intimacy. Because, you know, there are a lot of people watching, but it's not the hugest area. And, you know, if you, if you get the dining package or anything like that, and you get, like, one of those seats there, and you're just sitting there, it doesn't feel like this big sprawling thing um, on the guest side. But it does feel like a big, powerful thing from like hearing the narration and then seeing the or listening to the chorus as they're coming out at you. So it, like you kind of get enveloped in the Christmas spirit, even mm-hmm. though you're open out in the air and everything. Um, and you actually do get that, or at least I do, that like that the way your heart raises a little bit when you when you hear that music, when you hear those hallelujahs, when everybody builds together. And so it's this delightful bit of like intimacy and community but still it has a grand power behind it um that being said i'm seeing mph for the first time this week oh he's good he does a good job i like i like his quite a Mm -hmm. bit uh craig you actually have experience with the dining package specifically this year how did that go for you uh dining package is always uh it's just the easier way to do it Mm -hmm. yeah why would you wait in line I, I know you did. I know you did. <laughs> I did Steve. the dining package as well for Neil Patrick oh. Harris just when I left that your first year. Yeah, it's I we try to do that at least once a year and the great part about the dining package based on your narrator, uh, you never know how great of seats you're going to get. Like you can show up at the last second, it's just guaranteed seating. Mm-hmm. But so like when last year when I saw Kurt Russell, we got in line I think the second that they finished loading the show before us. So we were like, we waited throughout that entire candlelight processional plus the time in between, but we were sitting in perfect seats to mm-hmm. see him. And because some people, they want to go right down to the front row. And because they're like, I want to be as close to the narrator too as close. possible. You're too close. The band, the the orchestra, sorry, not the band, the orchestra 
is and sometimes they are like almost to the point where they're blocking the narrator because yeah. they're a lot closer to you than they yeah. are. So I always recommend you want to be in that front section, but sit in like the back row or the the second to last. Mm-hmm. And there's some ones that go out a little bit on the edge. Be careful though, because then the conductor might block you. There's a lot to Craig's guide to how to see. <laughs> yeah. professional. He's got sight lines yeah. and a map of oh, dots and yarn. <laughs> trust me, I do. I got my favorite spots, but uh, yeah. So, but then there's other nights when the narrator's not as big, where you can still like, even if you go like 30 minutes before the show, you can still have a great seat for it. Don't don't get too caught up in it, but it's always great. Like I think I waited in line maybe maybe about an hour before John Stamos. And I still was in not the, I wasn't in the down section that I normally like. I was in like the first or second row on the next one up with the dead center view on him. So amazing seats. Uh, it's something that you want to do. It's expensive. Like for uh, lunch, lunch or breakfast, if it serves breakfast, will get you the first show or the second show, depending on how early your lunch is. And then dinner will get you the the final show of the night. I don't recommend the first show of the evening. If you want to do it, do it. It's great. But the problem is it's not dark. Yeah. So like one of the most moving parts of the show is when they walk out with their candles right yeah. in the beginning. Mm. And when it's daylight outside, like, yet you don't you re- <laughs> <laughs> they're just holding candles. Uh, and with the six thirty show, it's finally it's finally dark enough mm-hmm. where you have time. Considering you ate like a late lunch, if you get hungry again, you can get a snack before the fireworks end. But if you have the late show, then you have like no time after fireworks to get get in your your position to watch fireworks so 6 30 for me is the sweet spot the narrators all amazing you know you really want to go see someone like neil patrick harris john stamos jody benson any of like the big whoopi. name people whoopi goldberg she's amazing when she does it the only thing i will say though is of all the narrators i've seen the end the end takeaway is that as much as I like think like, oh, yeah, I got to watch Kurt Russell. I got to watch Gary Sinise, John Stamos, Neil Patrick Harris, Whoopi, uh, Cheetah Rivera, all of them. The end takeaway is I the music is still what sticks with yeah. me because yeah. that is actually that's the part that you're going to remember the most. So, um, you know, don't if you can't like don't always plan around just getting the good narrator. You get to hear them talk in between songs, but it's the voices of Liberty and the cast choir and the guest choir that are going to yeah, blow you is, away. Yeah. That is a good point. I just am realizing that it's like, it's just those little snippets that, you know, they have a, a line or two that they, that they read and then it goes right to the next mm-hmm. song. Right. So, you know, if you really want to see someone then, and you must see them, then that's all I'm not telling you not to, but I think that's a valid point. It's more important to just see it in general than to really care about the narrator. Yeah. The first time I saw it was last year. I, I never saw it as a kid or anything like that. Um, so uh, the first time I saw it was last year. And I didn't know the narrator because he's a country musician and I don't listen to a lot of country. Um, if anybody remembers last year, Chase Atkins, maybe? Yeah. Was he? Um, but Wait, so, Trace. Trace. Trace, Trace Atkins. Chase. Isn't he married that, that's, to Nicole Kidman? Um, Quite possibly. No, that's I've Keith no- Urban. Oh, yeah. man, I, country music yeah. fans watching this right now are like, okay. ah. yeah, you, you, like, um, no, nothing against it. I just don't listen to it. So, like, you know, he puts on his cowboy hat and everybody claps and was really into it. Um, he did a great job, but I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I had no idea going into it who he was yeah. or anything about that. Um, it's the narrator's great, but that's the main selling point. Like Craig was saying, is the music and you know the experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, if you're going for to have like you feel like you've had an interaction with this celebrity, you're not getting that. Yeah. You're getting them reading a story, in like they said, the yeah. music. So and this, that's well, sorry. I was just gonna say, and this year feels special. This is the diamond celebration of the candlelight processional. Oh, really? So yeah, sixty years of it because Walt started it all the way back in the day at, at Disneyland. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much all the haps at um, at this year's uh, the Festival of the Holidays. And it sounds from this discussion we just had that we feel like this is one of the better festivals offered. It definitely yeah. more or less most things here lie in the best for most of us. A couple of misses here and there, mm-hmm. but overall a, a thing worth attending. So if you want to go check it out, you've got till December 30th of 2018 to do that. But uh, thank you guys for having this conversation. Thank you everyone out there for listening and watching. We're going to go now. So we'll see you next time with another episode of The Best and Worst of Walt Disney World.